Either you had the big brick or you had the bag with the cord. That's so funny. And some of them had bags for cord. <laughs> I thought I was fancy with a bag, you know. All right. So the, the widespread use of web-based mediums are more dominant today and having higher influence as a number of ways. Just as far as myself talked about, you know, Rice and myself just talked before this, what we are in, what we know of what's going on in Egypt is all dominated by this area. We wouldn't know anything without the web right, and the use of camera phones and all this social network at all. So this is the rationale that sets the stage of why the use of visual methodology. So what are visual methodologies? These are three ways in which we can look at sort of the theory behind collecting these types of methods. All right? One, transformation is not gathering of the world through a vision, it is the reordering of the world within a vision. So the whole idea is that somehow the visual sort of sets the stage on determining places, placement of people, placement of things. Right? We describe things in visual, even if we are sightless, we still describe things in our visuals, in a visual sense. Right? Uh, the next cultural construction of social life is, is dominated by visual in Western societies. Will we all agree with okay. that? Okay. All right, and then visual imagery is the dominant aspect, aspect of Western culture and has a powerful influence, powerful influence on our leisure, which you, what we understand leisure to be, will we agree that the visual is influenced greatly by, the leisure, our leisure is influenced greatly by the visual. So, these are visual materials. Examples of photographs, both amateur and professional. Oh, this PowerPoint slide, part of it, I forwarded the price so it would be available for on 645. So, you know, worry about some of this stuff that's posted up on there. Uh, videos that are produced, so docu you know, documentation, uh, films, so motion pictures are part of visual materials. Paintings both contemporary and also historical, our visual materials, drawings, like some of us doodle on sheets of paper when presentations are boring, or other creative artwork. Picture books and graphic novels, anybody here? Yeah, put Kindle up in there. Yes, yeah, true, true. Yeah, picture books and graphic novels, everybody here looks at you know, comic books and like that. Do you know what I mean by comic books? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maps, maps are part of visual material, right? and that's either the standard landmark or the hybrid or satellite viewpoints. But there are those are all visual materials. Television programming, computer screenshots, advertisements, billboards, and signage, both in the text and in the imagery, are both visual materials. So these are all the things that could be used. Or the, or the source material. So let's look at some examples. And this is where, again, stop me if there's some specific questions. So there's one area called photo elicitation that, that there's actually two different types. Um, but one type is where we then you know, solicit from respondents to take pictures. So they take pictures and they bring them back to us and we discuss what's being depicted here. So this is from a group that went to uh, slave castles in Ghana. And are people familiar with what slave castles are? No, yes. All types of head, knives, shake, whatever. Okay, so um, before people of African descent came over here, or were present over here in, in North America, South America, they were held in slave castles along the coast coastline by either uh, people from Denmark or from Spain or, or whatever colonial power, right? They were held in these castles that were along the coast and then placed in the ships and then brought over here. So these are the holding pens for areas. So they would have cannons out front to fight against whatever conflicting colonial power and then at the bottom they would have dungeons. So this is an actual dungeon room in one of the slave castles in Cape Coast. Got it. So a group of people from here went over there 
and took pictures. I asked them to take pictures of their visitation of these slave sites and then provide me with feedback of their experience and so on. What we found was that in all the pictures of their travels inside the castle, they never even took a picture of themselves. Very weird, right? So they never posed, they never took a picture of their friend, they never asked somebody else to take a picture of themselves. All of them, this is not taken from the web, this is their picture. Very interesting, right? So it helped to then support a whole sense that they went there for something beyond just being a tourist. This was a very personal, very sensitive sort of reconnection with this location. This is part of our discussion that my Charles and myself are still waiting to hear after a year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so this is one type of photo elicitation. Again, we asked the respondents to take pictures, bring them back, and then we asked them to kind of walk through with us what the pictures mean, but also we asked them questions about the trip in general and then refer back to the question and refer back to the picture that they've taken as another source of information on the response that they gave us. Any questions on this? Yeah, I'm yes. curious about the patterns on the floor. Oh, these are not patterns, these are tracks. And this is where, um, as they were standing, uh, when somebody would uh, pee or on themselves, they would travel down and then go down into these tracks out, all right? Because at any one, to like for a room like this, there may be 200 people standing there waiting on the next shift, all right? So it was dark with the and so that's, that's what the tracks are, so that's... So that's like from maybe 100, 200 years ago? Yeah, so I mean, yeah, so the stains, you know, they, they have not painted, I mean, the stains and so on are from all those years or well, centuries that these site caps were in operation. And, and, and Cape Coast, it changed hands so many times because so many different countries were warring with one another. So there was one under the British, there was one, another time over the, uh, the Danish, there was another time over the French. It changed hands so many times. So does that answer your question? Yes. All right. yeah. Any other questions? So this is one type of photo elicitation. Another type of photo elicitation is where we have images and we show the respondents and we ask them for feedback off of what they see. So one of the, this is from I think the first journal of leisure research. These images are not from that, you know. <laughs> but from, one of, from the first issue of journal of leisure research, uh, they they solicit, they solicit response off of these images to help determine people's desirability of visiting certain natural landscapes. Would you go here or would you go here? Which one of these places would appeal to you the most? And this was this was a helpful for management decisions in turn determining whether or not they would have a roadway built there, a landing for you to come out your car, take pictures, or they would just leave it where a trail system would, would, you know, would be at. So this was one way to sort of help with management decisions upon where would people go in a particular national park. I think for their study, they focused in on Yellowstone. It was before I was born, so you may have to ask now. Just don't, just don't. Thank you so much. So this is another type of full elicitation. Again, the whole the elicitation is elicitation of responses. All right. So either you're going to elicit responses from photos that the, the, the respondents provide you. you know, so you can ask somebody for their photo album, right? You know, show you know, if you can bring me your photo album, and I can see how your family has interacted with one another all throughout the year. See? So you would elicit photos from them or whatever visual material from them, or you can then present imagery or photos and so on to them and then elicit the response. Photo elicitation. Along with this, you can also, with photo elicitation, you can have children or whoever draw you certain things. So it doesn't just have to be limited to a, a, a picture, a still picture. In this case, um, these researchers were looking at 
uh, analyzing children's depiction of violence to the asthma. 